Hi everyone, Scrappy Kathy here with um, a layout for Calvin Ball and for day 13 of series 7 of 30 Days of Sketches with Christy's Beautiful Life. I'm going to bring this sketch up higher. As you can see here, there's, there's some um, mixed media drips there, which I could do with watercolor and, you know, uh, <clears throat> Uh, many ways, but I have a pre, um, a pre-done mixed media sheet by Vicki Booten that I have been wanting to use, and I think this will be a good page for it. It goes all the way across the page, and this one is just right under the cluster, but I don't think that's going to matter. It looks like there are two sheets of vellum or acetate or some other kind of um, see-through stuff underneath a single square photo. I have a strip of photos that I'm going to work in, uh, and I'll, I'll try to ha have as many of the other elements as possible there. I have a little bin. Inside this bin is all of the Calvin Ball points that I kind of gathered together for this particular layout. And some of the, I have Nouveau drops and splatters and things like that around. So we'll kind of go, I'm going to cut my square pieces um, out of this vellum sheet. It's uh, from Strawberry Fields, which is a Webster's Pages line from, gosh, years ago, at least three or four anyway. And um, I'll overlay them and we'll kind of go at it from there. I may not put you through the... Um, agony of seeing me apply all of the Calvin Ball points, and I won't go through the list, but I'll kind of pull them up as we go along. So, here we go. I'm going to cut this, and instead of using them uh, square, I'm going to go ahead and use the full 4x6 size because it kind of relates a little bit better to the uh, vertical um, strip of photos that I have. And it's choosing which of those. That one kind of has a brownish tint and I'm probably more partial to the yellow tint and then the pink that's there. So I'll kind of do them like that, I believe. Um, and I'm gonna put the yellow kind of here by the golden yellow. Maybe I'll do them this way. And then I'll put the pink here by the, by the pink and purple. And I'm going to use my stapler to adhere them. Um, and I get a Calvin Ball point for stapling. Uh, let me see if my stapler will reach there. Probably not, unless I go this way. There we go. I've got <laughs> one on there. Uh, and it, they'll get glued down better as I do some other things. Okay, here's my photo strip. And I thought I'd put it parallel with the angle of this one. I'm going to back it with some foam. That should work. Cut just a little piece off the end. a little bit of a border here for me to tuck some other things under. I'm going to bring it down a bit so that I'm not losing that, um, you know, banner kind of look. I have this, ah, it's adhesive. This is a tag. I'll wait 
to put that on. I want to do the torn paper bits and a bit of a uh, frame and these. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to put this along the side of this. And I've got this little bit that I'm going to slide in. Lift that up and kind of sneak that in there. Okay, you can barely see it, but that's good enough. And I have this frame, which I thought I would combine with the um, with the tag. Let me see. I'll put the tag on first. I'm going to make it parallel with this one. And I'll do this the same way. And because those ends are going to show through the vellum, I will that'll be a good place to put some embellishments to kind of hide that that end let me do do it over a little to the side and i'm trying to get that angle to be parallel with that one not that that makes a huge difference i'm going to do my um, unicorn there and you'll notice in the original, there's uh, like a cluster of white leaves or something kind of uh, there. I've cut this um, kind of feather drop from the, um, from a cut file. And I'm just gonna kind of slide it under there to kind of echo that I'll put this here and this here. Okay. Now I'm going to finish this sticker sheet of cork stickers by using this word love. My title's going to go here, and I've got that. That should go there or maybe up here. I'm going to go ahead and overlap. I do really don't want to do that. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to do it. I'm not gonna do that there. Well, I'll see where I wanna put this. I'm, I'm having a, a moment. Okay, there is a, um, there's a doily cut in half and used in two different places on the original. And I like that idea. That's one of my favorite things to do. So let me, I've already cut my doily in half. And I'm kind of trying to sneak it under there. It's not really wanting to go. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is get some liquid glue on it uh, along this area. And wherever I stick it, it'll hit. And if there's an area that's where the cut is exposed, 
I will cover it with an embellishment because we all know that we can cover things with embellishments when we're playing Calvin Ball. That's <laughs> one of the, the best things about Calvin Ball. This one I'm going to slide in under here. Um, and I'll put the glue directly on there. I'm going to just barely slide it under so that you really can't see the cut end of it. Okay. Um, there's a There's a point that you get by including a tree. Let me take this guy off so that I haven't messed up my ability to stamp that tree on there. And I'm going to just ink it up with black. I'm not gonna get fancy as far as color. Um, it might look nice to do it in green there or even brown, but I'm going to, I've got this black and white here, so I'm good with going black. Okay. There. Um, let me clean that off. Again, because it's a page about a dog, <laughs> I'm um, I feel free to do any silly kind of embellishing that I want. Okay, I have a so silly is definitely the name of the game here. Let me cut this bit off and put it down here. Okay, so I've got this and I'm gonna make this parallel with this line. I've got other things that will go there. My title is A Dog's Life. And I'm kinda gonna, let me do this. Um, I'll do this rub on here. Let me get it evenly spaced under there. How about that? That should work. And I'm not going to worry if this picks up all of the rub-on. These are kind of old rub-ons that I'm using and they haven't been kept in their packaging. So some areas may have dried out and I'm gonna let it be uh, imperfect. See, and that is imperfect. So now I will do that and push that down. And I'm going to use this bit of a bow. Where am I going to use that? Maybe we want to use it. Hmm. I'm bringing this color over to another section of the page. So I'll put that there. And this has that same teal kind of color. Let me put that there. Uh, there's, you get a point for something tropical and something floral. So I have a hibiscus, and you can't get any more tropical or floral than that. So let 
me see. This is a washi tape sticker. So it counts as my washi tape point, I think. My feeling is that that's the case. So I'm just gonna kind of put it here and by putting that like color on, you know, the yellow flower on the yellow background. It's it's a little bit subtle and doesn't, you know, you need all the help you can get when doing Calvin Ball so that it doesn't scream, um, you know, too much. Uh, so let me kind of get this done. I'm gonna use another staple and I'm going to glue that on top of that tag. I'm not going to un try to pull up that tag and get the ribbon through it. I frankly forgot to put the ribbon on there, so that does not bother me. In, in Calvin Ball, you can follow the rules. You can ignore the rules. You can make up new rules. And let's see, I've got a, um, an, a little orange label and I, oh, I haven't finished that. I have two more on there. So that's another thing that's, I can, I can finish. I'm going to put this across here just as a little addition of color. And, and I feel okay using any color here because all the colors are on the background. And this orange is right here and there's you know kind of a yellow thing coming down. So that's two uh, sticker sheets that I have finished. Uh, let's do a star here. I've got... Um, this aqua star that kind of are it's slightly greenish blue not uh, not exactly teal and I want that color kind of represented down here so I'm okay placing it down here and it'll, it, this and the hibiscus now are kind of a mini cluster. And I need wood veneer and I need a heart. And this is a page about a dog. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my wood veneer heart down here into this cluster. It's a heart with a little puppy paw print. Okay. And let's see what else we have. We still have this love, but I'd need to do my title. I'm gonna fussy cut something that I printed. Um, and maybe prop these up on foam tape to make them more like thickers in a way. Um, get the foam tape. I'm gonna cut a little bit here. I'll start it here and have it come down. actually do it here and I'm setting it on that angle there okay what happened to the word life did I drop it again it wouldn't be a scrappy Kathy video if I didn't drop one of my key
key important elements. <laughs> okay, and I'm not just fussy cutting each letter. I'm kind of taking the Just doing some general shape as if it had been cut by one of those ephemera cutters with big wide margins around that. So let me take this and I'll do the shorter one on here. that slightly wrong angle. And let me put um, a little tiny bit over here on the end just to plug this down. And I am doing this to get the um, typewriter font point. Um, I also use the typewriter font, the same font actually, but in a normal size for my journaling. And I thought it would be fun to do that same font, gigantic. I think this is called um, Typewriter from Hell. Okay, I have um, two of favorite typewriter fonts. One is Typewriter from Hell, and the other is um, 1942 Report, maybe. Um, and they both kind of look like the old typewriters I used to type on in my dad's office. Okay, I have used a washi tape flower, so I don't need that. I've got banners that need to be uh, placed somewhere. There are these yellow banners. Maybe these could go kind of as part of a clustery sort of thing going on there. Let me get them stapled. Kind of do do that. Do I do that there, or maybe up here underneath this guy? Let's do that, and I'll curl those guys up. I need enamel dots, but I'll do those towards the end. I do need a clock, and what I want to do is maybe stamp it kind of over here. So I'm going to ink up only one half of it and I'll stamp it with my hand. Uh, do I have it? I have it upside down. So let's see if there's a place over on the other side that I could do it. How about we peel this back and we stamp it right there. Okay, that works for me. Um, again, I don't have my stamp chamois here, so that's not gonna get perfectly cleaned. I have another item that I want to stamp, which is a, oh, and this, um, the clock and this butterfly are October afternoon, and they're a company that's gone out of business, and you get a point for using uh, something from a company that is no longer in business. 
So that works for me. I have lots of October afternoon papers, but at the moment I, I don't have them out on the table. So I'm overlapping the vellum there. Oh, that came out cute on the vellum. I may do another one right there and yet another one right there because I think that kind of, it draws your eye to the title. Okay, and it's of course shaping up to look nothing like the original, but that's okay with me. Put that away. Um, let's see, heart, I've already got a heart. I need a rainbow and I need a speech bubble and I need a farm animal and an arrow, some bling, which I'll put over here with the enamel dots. I'll use the other half of that bow. Another time I'll put the heart there. I've got sequins here. I've got a snowflake, a squirrel, a pot of coffee, a um, half an avocado, a cloud, and the last of that sticker sheet over there. Okay, so let's see where we're going to put all these little things. I'm going to put love across here. That's clearly the title, and this works out fine for me. I do need the rainbow to go here on this side because that's the side that's, the right side is cut. So I'm going to kind of slide it under there, and I'm going to place this cloud here, so I'll put a little bit of glue on the part that's going under the cloud. I mean, under the rainbow. So that works. Uh, let's see. The um, the avocado. I'm gonna put right here under the under the unicorn i'm going to put the cow where we're just kind of putting silly things on now the cow is facing well it doesn't have to face that way the cow can actually i did this yesterday i guess the cow can actually face any direction it wants. I'm going to put the cow under the rainbow and cloud here. There we go. Um, I've got a speech bubble that I thought would be cute right there. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive right here on the mixed media part and if the glue shows at all, you'll just think it's part of the mixed media. <laughs> and I have a snowflake, which I'm going to kind of try to hide over here on top of the mixed media and under the A there. I have a pot of coffee that is facing a certain way. And it could kind of go there. Kind of hiding underneath there, but peeking out enough so that you can tell what it is. I have this adorable little squirrel, which could go here, kind of under the bow. 
kind of the squirrel kind of looks like he's taunting Reese. And the, these photos are are Reese likes to co cover up with the throws that are on the couch. You know the the throws that are meant for humans. And so she gets works her way under there and then puts her paws out. So one of these is the original, I think this one, and then all these others are filtered uh, copies. Okay, so I have this arrow and I can do it that way. I'll put a little glue. I just die cut this arrow out of white foam, the kind of foam that I put behind photos. So it's And I did it in white because I didn't necessarily want it to show up too dramatically. Okay, I think those are all of those things. I do have some white sequins that I'm going to put there. Maybe only a couple or three of them. Maybe one right here and one maybe right here in the middle of the snowflake, and then one down here as part of the cluster there. And again, these are white, so as not to um, really stand out and scream too much. There, it, uh, kind of a subtle um, form of, of adding, uh, and, and these aren't particularly shiny sequins either. So they work for my purpose to, to be there, but not add, you know, dramatic clutter to things. I really like how stamping that and these uh, the gold um, splotches that were on the uh, on the paper that Vicky Booten did. <laughs> um, I think those show up nicely. I did not do. There are splatters, but they're fake ones, and I'm gonna kind of add my own black ones, but not a lot of them. That's just to, to have something uh, personal added on there. My bling, I'm going to use these um, these dots. I'm going to put that one there. I'm putting it putting them on things. Uh, let's put this here on that cloud. Okay. Um, I think those qualify as bling. I've got enamel dots. I'm going to add them. Wait, let me get this lifted up and this lifted up. I want those kind of overlapping there. Um, let's see, where do I want to put the enamel dots? Um, why not one right there and one right here? Let's just do a trio of them together. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, let's, oh, do not have Nouveau Drops on there yet. Let's see what we're going to do. Nouveau Drops. I'm going to add some Nouveau Drops. Um, let's see. Let me cover up my glue, my Nouveau glue. I'm going to test my Nouveau Drops. This is kind of a, um, an iridescent blue. It is called, uh, it's Blue Babe. So I'm going to do a blue babe drop right there, one right here. I'm just doing 
them on top of drops that are already on the page. So, not a lot of interest, but uh, just another, uh, you know, kind of decoration for the page. Okay, so I'm done. It, uh, as I said, doesn't look anything like the original, but was certainly inspired by it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll see you with my next, uh, my next layout. Not sure what or when that will be. I have all my um, sketches from Christie's Beautiful Life kind of laid out to make it easier for me to get to them. Um, watercolor. I didn't use watercolor. Let me do pick up some watercolor. This is a wet watercolor brush. It looks like it's got some yellowish or orangish. So let me pick some of that up. and add a few kind of out of place splatters because Vicky's splatters match the drips. So mine, mine are the splatters that don't match the drips. Okay, so that gets me my watercolor point. All right, so now I'm finished. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye. Let me pull this back into frame here. And it seems like I have moved the camera. I hope it wasn't like that the whole time. I apologize if I moved the holder so that things didn't uh, didn't line up during the video. I'm I'm going to still upload the video, but I may put a I'll check it out and I may put a disclaimer in the uh, video description so that you so that you know, or may put apologies in the title. So thanks for watching, bye.